Mm. 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 So weird. <laughs> it's so good, but it's so weird. Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're making a Tris Leches cake. Now, before we begin, if you have ever made this cake before, don't judge me. This is my first time. My friend Angelica, her daughter is having a 16th birthday party, and this is the cake that she has requested. And since I love to bake and I love to adventure, she asked me if I wanted to try it. And well, of course I do. So I thought I would try it with you. You wanna make this cake? This is what you're gonna need. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our oven preheating to 325. Next, we're gonna line our cake pans with parchment paper. Now, these are round, and I have a trick for round cake pans. So I have my two pieces of parchment paper here. I'm just gonna fold them into quarters. So there's half, here's a quarter. And now I'm going to fold them into like a triangle. And I'm gonna keep folding into a triangle, keeping the seam side down until we get about right there. And now I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna touch the middle-ish, take a pair of scissors, make a little snip so that I know where to cut. And then this should be exactly the size of my pan. So now I have my two cake pans and these are two eight inch cake pans. You could also use a nine by 13. You will still want to put parchment in that nine by 13. But here we go, ready for the moment of truth. These should be exactly the right size. All right, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna grease this pan before the parchment goes in and after because we do not want this thing to stick. Because I'm actually making it a layered cake. She actually sent me a picture. So this is what I'm going for. Will I achieve that? Well, I don't know, but we're gonna, we're gonna try. We are gonna put our parchment circle right down inside, press it down, and then I'm gonna take my pastry brush and I'm just gonna butter over the top of it because I do not want this sticking anywhere. We're gonna set these aside now. All right, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is combine our flour, our salt, and our baking powder in a bowl with a whisk. And you want to make sure it's combined well. And we're gonna start working on our yolks. So let's go ahead and give these a quick beat just to break them up. Perfect, and now we are gonna add one and one half cups of sugar to this bowl and reserve the other half of a cup for your egg whites. We're gonna mix this until it is pale yellow and fluffy. All right, uh, that looks pretty pale yellow to me. Next, we're gonna add two thirds of a cup of milk to this mixture. And we're gonna give it a mix one more time. Oh, I probably should have used a bigger bowl. It's splashing all over the place. And then we're gonna add the vanilla. Now we are gonna add the egg yolk mixture to the flour mixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the whole thing in there and we're just gonna stir to combine and fold together until just everything is moistened and combined. Now, as I'm looking at this batter, it is a layered cake and I wonder if they're supposed to, I'm supposed to have a third pan because this is a lot of batter for two pans. So, um, maybe I will grab one more pan. All right, but look at that. 
Perfect, we're gonna leave it just like that. I'm gonna set it off to the side. Third pan. All right, now it's time for the egg whites. So we have our egg whites here, we have our sugar here, we have a new set of beaters. If you only have one set of beaters, um, make sure you wash and dry them well because any water or residue from the yolk will prevent these from becoming stiff peaks. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make these into stiff peaks. So first we're gonna just kind of get them started. And as soon as we see them start to get foamy, we're gonna start adding our sugar. That's pretty, that's pretty stiff. So now we're gonna fold all of our egg whites into the rest of our batter. So let's take some of this and let's fold it in. Okay, so we're just gonna fold it until we see no streaks of white remaining or very few. That ensures that that egg white is properly incorporated and you definitely want to fold, not mix, so that we don't knock all that beautiful air out that we just put in. All right, and when you turn it, when you fold over and you see all the same color, we're ready to get it in the pan. All right, and uh, yeah, let's measure this out. And then we're gonna take an offset palette knife and we are going to spread it out evenly in the pan. All right, it looks like each pan will have about 430 um, grams in each pan. So this recipe definitely needed three cake tins even though it only said two. All right, once you have all your pans smoothed out into the oven, they are gonna go for 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Then we are gonna let them cool completely. All right, the cakes are out and cooled and now we're gonna poke holes all over it. I'm just gonna use a wooden chopstick. You can use a fork or a skewer or something of the sort but this wooden chopstick looks like it's about the right size. So I'm just gonna poke holes all over. Okay, I hope that's right. <laughs> all right, so into a mixing bowl, preferably with a pour spout, we are gonna put the whole can of sweetened condensed milk, the whole can of evaporated milk, the three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream, and the cinnamon. Now, some of the recipes I read, um, they actually did not put this in the cream that goes inside the cake, but I figure, why not? Um, it was like half and half, so I don't know which one the correct way is because both the recipes that I kind of gleaned from said authentic. I don't know, you do you, we're gonna do this. So in the cinnamon goes and make a mess, yep. Let's whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh yeah, there we go. Use a whisk, yo. And we will pour some of this over the top. Let's soak into all the holes. I feel like there needs to be a few more holes on the outside, but maybe I'm wrong. So I'll just let that one soak in there for a second. Wow. I mean, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. And apparently uh, that's it. Now we are going to need to put these in the refrigerator for no less than one hour, um, preferably overnight, but I'm not gonna wait overnight. I'm just gonna wait an hour. Okay, welcome back. And now it is time to make our cream. Now we're gonna put the two cups of very, very cold milk into a bowl and we are going to have our 
half of a cup of powdered sugar and our one teaspoon of meringue powder ready to go. Now the teaspoon of meringue powder is actually so that this will be stable um, for longer than just overnight. So that like um, I can make this cake, I don't know, like a day ahead of time and it will still be fine when I bring it to the party. So what I will do is I will just mix this up lightly so that, and make a mess, of course. Wouldn't be me if I didn't make a mess. And then we're gonna go ahead and start beating this until we have whipped cream, basically. All right, about the time that it is kind of soft peak cream, we're gonna add our one teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm gonna continue until we have reached the perfect consistency for this cake. All right, let's check this out. Yep, we're looking good. That's pretty thick. Okay, all right, so what I'm gonna do is just... It's not coming out. Hold on, hold on. Oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. It's coming. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Here is my piece of parchment. And what I will do is just turn it right over. And shake, 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 shake. Oh, there we go. So I feel like that one is way better. So we are going to put that one on the center of the board. And then flip it over. Parchment took the top layer of the cake off, but save that. That'll be a treat later. So now that it's on the board here, we're going to fill it with cream. I'm debating on whether or not to use a piping bag, but today I'm not going to, but for the party, I probably will. So what I will do is I will just scoop up some cream and dollop it in because we want a huge thick layer. And now it's time for some berries. All right, so I have some raspberries and some blueberries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them upward so that it will kind of help to stabilize that cake because there's nothing going to be stabilizing this cake once I set the other one down on top of it. <laughs> so we're gonna hope that the berries do the trick. And these were washed and dried yesterday so that today they don't have any worry about any extra moisture because any moisture in that cream will uh, destabilize it, will, will make it weak and it will be very sad. Okay, and then I'm going to just sprinkle some berries, some blueberries throughout. All right, I think that's good for now. And then we are going to cover it with some more cream. Okay, let's get our second cake on the top. Bum, bum, bum. Perfect. Okay, now this time we're gonna have to very carefully stick it on the top and hope that it doesn't go everywhere. Oh, 
Wow. All right, that's not bad. I feel not very confident, but you know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna go for it. Okay. Now, what the direction said was just you cover the top. I feel like I need more whipped cream than that. I may have to make some more whipped cream because I have a feeling that the whipped cream that I needed for this was actually for the smaller cake, not the three tiered cake. You know what I'm saying? Oops. So yeah, I'm gonna need some more. Okay, the idea is sound, but I think the cake layers are a little bit too big and I don't have enough icing. Yeah, I feel like if I had more icing, we'd be just fine. Okay, hold on. And there we go, there's some more. So with this much, I feel like we should be able to cover it completely. Um, I'm actually regretting my choice of not putting it in a piping bag, but um, I'll remember that for the final cake. I also regret not putting it on my turntable. Usually I put this stuff on my turntable so I can turn it, but I didn't, I didn't think about it. And I think for the other cake, I'm gonna make half as much cake and probably the same amount of whipped cream just because I want to make sure I've got enough for the whole cake and I don't wanna to have to do it twice. Okay. All right, and we are going to attempt to smooth this out just a little bit. Okay, well, other than the fact that the board looks like a three-year-old made it, uh, the cake is covered-ish. I do feel like it's leaning, though. Is it leaning? See, it's leaning. Um, but if I turn it to this direction, maybe it's looks straight. It's not, it's not straight. Executive decision. I'm gonna put some in the piping bag for the top. Okay, and I'm just gonna put some little I don't even know what they are. We're gonna call that good. This is not, oh, I have it on me. So let's go ahead and shove some berries in the top. All right, well, look at that. That is not bad for my very first Tres Leches cake. Now there are a few things that I will do differently. I'm gonna half this recipe um, because I feel like, I mean, there's the other layer over there. Um, I feel like half this recipe would have been adequate um, and then may maybe we wouldn't have so much weight on the bottom there. I will still make double the amount of cream, um, but other than that, and I will use a piping bag the whole time and all of my scrapers and we won't have these kind of swirly bits on the top. They'll probably be like clamshell or a uh, flower shape or something. But that was just the closest one that I grabbed um, because I knew that this one was just gonna get cut into by me. So let's cut into it. So I'm gonna start right at the center, bring my knife all the way through This is a heavy cake. Whoa. Wow. All right. That's not bad. Look at how moist that is. That is some really moist cake. Remember, I've never had this before, but let's go ahead and cut into it. Oh, wow. Still there, you can hear all the moistness in it. 
but we must know how does it taste. I'll get a berry and one of the layers, not both. Here we go. That's a big bite. Oh dear. Okay, hold on. Let me cut it one more time. There we go. Mm. Oh, that's weird. Mmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, I am not sure what other... I was expecting, but I was not expecting that. The overwhelming thing that I want to say that it is if you are a texture person, this might not be the cake for you. Um, there are, I don't want to say it's soggy, but it's a bit soggy. <laughs> um, but the flavors of it, it there, it's really good, but the texture is something like the cake is fluffy, fluffy, fluffy but there's also this like sogginess to it, but it's still, still dang tasty. I'm gonna eat this whole piece, that's a problem. Mmm, 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 so weird. <laughs> it's so good, but it's so weird. All right, you guys, well, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I love adventuring in things that I have no idea how to make. I do my research, I look up recipes, I make some adjustments, and whenever possible, all of these recipes will be linked on my website at www.adventuresineverydaycooking.com and either they will be the original poster and either it will be the original recipe with a link to that external site or it will be the changes that I made for this recipe. This one will be the changes that I made for the recipe on my website. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.